Hi, this is Kevin Sargent here, and today I'm going to be talking about um, using Camtasia 8 to screen capture your Cubase sessions on the PC, and maybe why it's a little fickly to get it working. Okay, so right now I'm using Fraps, which is 60 seconds because it's a demo version. So anyways, I open up Camtasia, which is right here. And so yeah, we're going to go into Tools, click on that, click on the Options. Now for me, I'm using the REM Babyface, so it's set to Analog 1 and 2. So for your audio devices here, as for me, it's going to be select as is, which is the same thing in the VST audio system. So if you're using an audio, whichever the output's coming from and in, make sure it's the same thing here. So that's done. So now I'm going to stop using Fraps and I'm going to go actually and use Camtasia 8. So I press record and now we're screen capturing everything. And I'm going to get to something in a minute right now actually. Um, in Cubase, which is right here. I don't want you anymore. Thank you. Okay, in your transport panel, you're going to notice right here there's a signal, which is my voice from the mic. Um, you want both sides to match, obviously, which is picking up the stereo signal of it from uh, Camtasia 8 and within your audio interface. Now, here is obviously, you know, the, the stereo mix from the main mix output. So, I'm going to go to my um total mix and right here you notice that I have loop back I'm going to click it off and just to show you something so here we go so you notice that right here where my, mouth, my cursor is it was picking up the the main s uh, stereo signal but on the left side to it it wasn't and it took me a while, but I finally got it. Here, for me, because I'm using this particular product with the software that I came with, in the control room in the main settings, go to your assign if you have one where you could select like your output, like your main output or output B. And I selected analog one and two. But what really matters the most is when this loopback button is on. So now that it's on, I'm going to go back within Cubase. And we're, I'm going to press playback. And now you see that it's picking up both signals on each side. That's because all three items are making are communicating to each other. So within Cubase, it's sending out the signal uh, from, um, from the REM baby face to um, Camtasia 8, so it's capturing it all. So now it's actually capturing. So like before where you're capturing and you didn't hear any audio, it was just a pretty little video that you were doing. Well, now it's going to do that all because that button had to be clicked. Now, if it wasn't for that, like I showed momentarily before, you just saw the video. There was no audio except for the sound of my lovely voice. Haha. -ha. So I'm going to go into functions and I'm going to go to matrix. <laughs> uh, so here you got the configuration part. And you got your snapshots, which I'm not going to get into that, but basically, you could like for each different configuration, you could pretty much store different settings. But I'm not doing that because I don't have like a big watt studio until I win the lottery. So here, anything from output three and four all the way to its right was default. That's right. And everything of its left was me. Uh, so analog one and two is so analog. 1, you have output 1, analog 2, you have output 2. Make sure that is there. Sometimes it could be like in the negatives, just double click on it like I did. Well, it, this is for me, but I mean like however you get it where it's just 0 dB. And yeah, at the bottom all here is the same thing. I just put it anyways. And my main actually should, there you go, now it's, now it's uh, 0. So yeah, so here you go. That's what this should look like. But again, if you're using like a Forkestrate audio interface or you're using M Audio audio interface, I'm assuming they come with their own DSP software. So the concept's the same. It might be placed differently or whatnot, but the idea is the same. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, I'm going to go back to my mix review. And yeah, so it, it, I mean, now that I've been doing it f for a while now, it's actually self-explanatory for me. And it's kind of weird that it's just this loop button made all the difference in the world. I mean, I even tried playing with the phase left and right, left and right, but it didn't do much. And uh 
What's in here? This is probably something I just pressed on too. Let's see if that makes a big difference with the loop back button on. No, it doesn't. So that's probably just for when I press on the big round circle knob, silver knob. You could change the levels as if I was in the control room and I wanted a certain way. Um, what I did notice though, and I don't remember how this came about, but if you hear like a, like a, I guess an echo, you got to turn down one of the faders. It's either going to be in the software playback. And I don't believe it was in the hardware playback. No, I think it was software playback. Um, yeah, but it hasn't done that since, uh, but I believe it was all because of this loop back button. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, and then now you could just do your own, um, you know, tutorials and whatnot, which is going to be cool. Uh, yeah, so that's about it. I mean, as far as you have in depth, like external processing, well, it's kind of like having a blueprint map about it. But if it's like self-explanatory, like such as myself, where it's very simple, like I got my REM audio interface, I got my MIDI control uh, keyboard, Axiom 49, then it's really just within the software, and that's where you got to spend most of your time focusing. And like the goal is to make sure that these guys right here, are the signals are all up and about fireworks. So that's pretty much it. So um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, leave any comments or suggestions or whatnot in the comment section and uh yeah so uh, merry christmas happy holidays and happy new year's to everybody and thanks a bunch cheerio